Good day, mates. It's your old pal Mark Bunker from Xenu TV. I'm in the middle of reading this incredible book, Blown for Good, by Mark Headley. It is amazing, and I recommend you get it. This is uh, Mark Headley talking about his years inside Scientology in the Sea Org and at the Hidden Desert Compound near Hemet, California. Unbelievably good book, and, and uh, I recommend it highly. Anyway... I'm reading this book, this fabulous book, and then all of a sudden, I hear from down under Senator Xenophone, who I've never heard of before, but is now my favorite senator on the planet. He gets up on the Senate floor and denounces Scientology in the harshest possible terms. Calls it a criminal organization. And he uh, puts into the record affidavits and letters from former members speaking about the abuse that they've suffered and, and in some cases actually detailing some of the abuse that they heaped upon other people. Really amazing, amazing thing to happen out of the blue. And I know it didn't happen out of the blue either. I know people have been talking to him for a while and giving this, him this information and the senator said, you know, I'm going to stand up and do something about it. And not a lot of politicians have been doing that, so my hat's off to you, sir. Um, anyway, that's amazing, and then the next morning I wake up to discover that Australia's Prime Minister has said, you know what, I have my own concerns about Scientology, and I'm going to look at all that information that the Senator put into the record. Now, there's no indication that there's going to be any widespread investigation of Scientology at this point, but it's a possibility. And the last time that Scientology was investigated in Australia, well, it didn't go well so well for Scientology. If I can uh, read to you from Justice Anderson's, uh, well, this is his favorite, famous quote of the Supreme Court of Victoria, Australia. Justice Anderson said, Scientology is evil. Its techniques are evil. Its practice is a serious threat to the community. Medically, morally, and socially, and its ad adherents are sadly deluded and often mentally ill. Scientology is the world's largest organization of unqualified persons engaged in the practice of dangerous techniques which masquerade as mental therapy. So... Scientology probably doesn't want to go through that again. Also, last time they were booted out of the country for a while. Then they got back in eventually. What's going to happen this time? Well, we don't know for sure. Here's one thing I do know, though. That Anonymous is staging protests outside all of the Australian embassies um, in support of Senator Xenophon. And I think that's a, a, a great idea, and I, I um, commend Anonymous for doing that. Uh, I've been reflecting a lot lately on um, some of the stuff that went on uh, when I lived in Clearwater, Florida. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking a lot about the Lisa McPherson Trust and what it was like working at the LMT in a building right next to Scientology's headquarters, uh, right next to their Office of Special Affairs, which was run by uh, Mike Rinder. And we had constant uh, dealings with Rinder and Rathbun and Ben Shaw and all these people from OSA who have since blown. And they've did a lot of horrible, horrible things. You know, I've, I've had a share of things, uh, a few things happen to, to myself that are really fairly minor compared to the abuse that everybody else has suffered. Well, not everybody else, but, but many people have suffered. Uh, I was arrested a couple of times. Um, I had to stand trial once. Uh, PIs used to follow me all the time, and, and, and one nut came after me with a hammer. But Really, that pales in comparison to things like things that happened to author Paulette Cooper, who wrote The Scandal of Scientology, and especially to my friend Bob Minton, who ran the Lisa McPherson Trust. And I got to see firsthand the global attack that Scientology waged on Bob and Stacy, Stacy Brooks. But primarily, they were trying to take down Bob any way they could. And 
it, as uh, Stacy used to say, it was like having the Terminator after you. I'm not going to go through all the things that they did to Bob, but but uh, really seriously, uh, it, it was horrible. It was it was a horrible time to live through, and seeing him go through this personally was was, was quite devastating. One of the hardest things about it was the attack from friends. You know Scientology is going to come after you. That's what they do. And at the time it was Rathbun and Rinder and all of these people working uh, under David Miscavige that, that were doing these dirty tricks, trying to destroy Bob. Eventually Bob got out from under it. And over the years, I've, you know, come to peace with with uh, what was done by some of these people who have now stepped forward and uh, and spoken out of of abuses in Scientology themselves. Marty Rathman and Mike Rinder, I think, have stood up and and struck an important blow against David Miscavige and, and detailed a lot of insanity that goes on inside Scientology at, at David Miscavige's hands. And I know that there are a lot of people who don't think they've gone far enough. And I can understand their uh, feelings, too. Uh, one of those people, I, I just put up a video today on Xenu TV from Aaron Saxton. He was one of the... the uh, individuals that approached Senator Xenophone and his story was introduced onto the floor of, of the Australian Senate. Well, Aaron sat down and did a lengthy interview detailing some of the abuses that he suffered and he um, inflicted on others when he was in a command position in Scientology and he is extremely hard on Rathbun and Rinder, and, and, and I can understand his position. I know exactly what he's saying, and I know that there are a lot of people in Anonymous who feel the exact same way, and they're taking it out on on Rathbun especially, since he has a blog, and, and he's only going after Miscavige, and, and he's not looking at Hubbard and all these other things. Well, my feeling is, you know, you do what you can do, and... It's okay to, you know, prod and, and, and try to, you know, egg somebody on to do more. We all need that. But you can't force them to do anything. Same way that I can't force Anonymous to do anything. Uh, one rule that I know is Anonymous is not my personal army. I know that. I can't tell Anonymous to do something and expect them to do it. I know that. So I'm not going to do that. And I'm not telling Anonymous now, you know, forgive Rathbun and Rinder. I'm not. It's up to you. But I want to suggest that the, the attacks that Bob suffered from Scientology, as awful and horrible as they were, were made worse by the attacks of friends and allies. People that we knew, had dinner with, had a bond with, and they may not have agreed with tactics that Bob or Stacy were using. You don't have to agree with everyone on everything, but they came after Bob very hard as well. And I can tell you from first-hand knowledge that those attacks from friends and allies are oftentimes even harder to deal with than the onslaught from the enemy that you know is out to destroy you. Those seemingly small attacks from friends really can undermine your will to go on and can lead to people abandoning the fight. So I understand everyone's position. I understand uh, this, I understand that. There are people like 
Dennis Ehrlich, Jerry Armstrong, they want to know inside information about what was done to them, how, why they want an apology. I understand that completely. I understand Aaron in his video when he's coming down on him. I understand Anonymous coming down on him. I understand that. But it hurts a lot. And, and to, to me, it seems to me that you can find common ground. You may not agree on everything. But there are some things that we can agree on. That David Miscavige is harming people. That David Miscavige is now the man in charge of disconnection, of forced abortions, of billion-year contracts, of freeloader debts. Hubbard may have created these things, but David Miscavige is the administrator in charge now. And if we can work on getting some of those abuses changed, that's a good start. So yeah, you know, Rathman may not share the same um, view on many of the other issues, but if he wants to stop some of these abuses, I'm happy to consider him an ally. And I hope that he considers me an ally as well. I've forgiven him for anything that he might have done against Bob and Stacy and me and, and everyone else, and I don't expect everyone else to. I, I honestly don't. But I know how detrimental it is to, to be chipping away at alliances. And if you look at it, I know there are a lot of people who think, well, Scientology itself is corrupt and evil, just like Justice Anderson said, and it should be wiped off the planet. Well, my feeling is it's not going to be. I mean, there are some uh, things in it that must be beneficial to some people. Uh, not everyone is there because they're brainwashed, although I do feel that there is brainwashing inside Scientology, and there are a lot of control mechanisms in place that are evil. But Hubbard, you know, the people like Rathbun and Rinder will talk about the, the, the very lofty writings uh, of Hubbard. Um, all of these, you know, man is inherently good and, and all the things that are in the creeds and all, all that nonsense. He, Hubbard wrote some very, very noble words. The problem is he never lived up to them. Is it possible that someone could take over and actually change Scientology for the better. Keep what works. Get rid of all the stuff that's the control issue, that's the negative stuff. Stop the RPF. Stop all of these other abuses. Lower the prices. In fact, it should be free. I mean, any religion should be free. That's my feeling. If you want to clear the planet, that's the way to do it. Distribute the material. There you go. Is that possible? I don't know. But we see people over the decades who have been in the free zone, and they're doing just fine. And no one's upset with them. They still believe in Hubbard. They believe in the tech and all of that. So if we honestly believe that you know people in the free zone aren't hurting anything, is it possible that corporate Scientology could reform? It's possible. Do I think they will? I don't know. I, I'm, that's why I'm keeping on them. Um, but at any rate, I think we should find ways to to work together. And you know, I, I, I'm kind of rambling here, <laughs> and I apologize for that. I realize that. You don't think I caught myself rambling like five minutes ago? I did. But um, but I think there are serious. Uh, issues to be dealt with and discussions to be had and you don't have discussions you don't find common ground if you're attacking one another i look back now at the lmt and if there's one thing that i would do differently i would use the internet way differently because i and a lot of other people at the lmt spent a lot of time on alt-religion scientology engaging in flame wars 
and it did nothing. Whereas now you've got, you know, you've got video on the web to such an extreme that you can really get out a message worldwide to so many people. Um, I, I, would, I would stop the pettiness uh, myself and concentrate on informing people. And that's what we're all doing. That's what Rathman is doing, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what Anonymous is doing. And you know what? We have different audiences. Rathbun and Render can talk to people that would never listen to me. There are people inside Scientology who have seen upsets themselves. They're not going to turn to me. They're not going to turn to somebody with a, a website called Xenu TV that they've been told is evil. But they'll listen to Rathbun. And maybe he can talk some sense into them. It seems like he's doing a good job. It seems like there's people every day coming out and denouncing David Miscavige's form of Scientology. And I think that's good. We can talk to people that don't want to hear or can't hear uh, Rathbun's message because they don't understand all the Scientology lingo. And we may have a different slant on things. But we're, we're still both imparting uh, important messages. That's all I have to say. Really, I'm going to let you go now. But you can always find me where? At Xenu TV. You're right. Till next time, this is Mark Bunker. Bye.